Hello, this is Jack from Historical Archery, and today we're going to be looking at a Qing Dynasty uh, Chinese repeating crossbow reproduction. Um, there's a lot of videos online about these, um, and you can see a lot of variants, but there's very few videos that actually talk about the history of Chinese repeating crossbows, and I'd like to take this opportunity with my reproduction. The first archaeological finds are from the 4th century BC during the Warring States. Um, it's a specific archaeological find that it's about this, a small size repeating crossbow with a double magazine, and the action is not lever, so instead of doing this, you're actually doing an action where you use two hands to push and pull. So you're shortening the amount of time uh, it takes to reload. Um, so unfortunately, there are very few replicas of that specific design today. We're not too sure how effective they really were. In fact, I personally think these Warring States repeating crossbows were you know, a novelty thing to protect nobles. These kind of crossbows with the long power stroke with the three-piece triggers, this is your military weapon. So we don't have any evidence during that time period of, uh, of the Warring States period where they use repeating crossbows for the military. Um, these are really the Chinese crossbows for military. Meanwhile, these are more of a niche weapon or self-defense weapon or sometimes just a toy. So keep that in mind. Now I do want to mention it's thought that a, someone with last name Qin has invented these during the Warring States period. We're not entirely sure if it's actually made by this person or not. Um, and then later on, during the Han Dynasty around 180 AD, we do have military writings of using repeating crossbows for military use. Uh, that being said, it, it, these seem like very heavy versions and it's also used for rebel per, uh, rebel forces. A rebel force typically has less armor, so it makes more sense to use these on them. Um, but even then, they, it seems like they're drawn by wheels, some kind of mechanism, and they're likely not light weapons like these, because this has about 50 pounds of draw weight, but the power stroke is so short of about five inches. So you're looking at equivalent to about a 10 pound bow at full draw. So this is really not a weapon in this dimension. You could beef up the draw weight or you could be beef up the power stroke to make it more of an effective weapon. Something, for example, 100 pounds with a 10 inch power stroke, then it can be more of a weapon used for an unarmored person. So just keep that in mind. Now, later on, as after the Han Dynasty, you have writings of Ming Dynasty crossbows. And this is the first time I see them being mentioned by um, Zhuge Liang, which is the modern name for them, romanization of Zhuge Liang, which is Chukunu. Um, I'm sure a lot of you guys know the Chukunu, and this is where the name comes from, from Zhuge Liang, which is during the Three Kingdoms period. Perhaps he invented um, this specific design with the lever action. I'm not too sure, um, but it's certainly the repeating crossbow idea is not invented by him because we are, have literal archaeological evidence dating back to the 4th century BC. So, And then in the Ming Dynasty, these were occasionally used, um, but it's more of a niche weapon. And, you know, around the same time, the Koreans during the Imjin War, they actually used these in, for naval battles. But you can see theirs is much larger than this. And uh, you got a much larger power stroke and it seems to have a horn prod or at least a recurve prod um, so it's a pretty decent weapon for um, unarmored uh, soldiers and perhaps you can penetrate some light armor um, with those specific uh, repeating crossbows. The authors also mention using poison at least for the Chinese ones using poison for the bolts likely because of the low power um, because the biggest limiting factor of these lever action ones is that the power stroke um, can't be too long. If it's as long as a Han Dynasty crossbow, this would, been, this would be a massive repeating crossbow. Um, perhaps they were made, but your arm is only this long. So there's a limiting length of how long that draw length can be with the lever action design. 
With the warring states design, theoretically you can have a much longer power stroke because you're using your arms to be pushing and pulling it. And perhaps they were more effective because the power stroke is much longer. At least you can make them much longer than with the lever action because this is your limiting power stroke. Remember, the archaeological find from the Warring States period is a burial crossbow. So perhaps the actual ones were much longer. We don't know for sure. Um, because th they're so scarce, these finds. So just keep that in mind. But during the Ming Dynasty, you get these more simplified versions. And these you can mass produce much more than those intricate uh, Warring States period ones. And you can see how easy these are actually made. Considering the fact that you look online on YouTube today and see how many do-it-yourself repeating crossbows there are, this is a very rugged and simple design that anybody can make. During the Qing Dynasty, you see these during Boxer Rebellion and during the Sino-Japanese War. So it's just interesting how they were used even uh, at the same time period of um, bolt-action rifles. Um, so that's very interesting, but um, keep in mind by that point in time during the Qing Dynasty, these are likely held by militia uh, and not regular infantry. Um, but also, they would have been used as toys during the Qing Dynasty, and that's how they were preserved today. This is really the longest living mechanical weapon uh, in history. Uh, mechanical in the sense that it has a mechanical device, not mechanical advantage, because technically a, a lateral or a spear thrower they, they're using, you know, mechanical advantages, but I, you know what I'm talking about, mechanical we weapon, I'm talking about something with a mechanism. Um, this is the longest, you know, repeating weapon in history that we know of. The biggest difference compared to the historical Qing Dynasty one is I put lashings on it, and it's because the, the bow is very close to the ends, so there's a very thin piece of wood holding it. And in fact, that piece of wood fell off, so I had to re-glue it. So now it's relying on the lashings to secure it. And we know from European crossbows that these lashings would hold much more draw weight than what this 50-pound bow can handle. So now it's secured, nice. And it's uh, the string is made of Dacron, but you can use hemp or silk or a natural material if you want. But um, and if it's the same as every other late repeating crossbow, is that it has a push pin, and this pin is just pushes it up, similar to African crossbows. Similar to African crossbows, where it has a push pin design as well, and the Scandinavian ones, where it just pushes up. Um, these are all in the same trigger family. The easiest way to make this more powerful um, is to have a much longer draw power stroke. And to do that, you can maximize your, your see, when you go all the way here, you actually have a lot more than that. You can actually go all the way here and then go all the way there to maximize your power stroke. But this one, it only goes up to here. So if you want a much longer power stroke, you want something designed all the way there. So let's look closely at the action. And you can see um, the brace height is set here which means when you pull it to, to here, now the string is supposed to catch onto that lash. This one, low, the brace is a little low, but if it's high enough, it'll catch. And then you pull it all the way, but I'm not gonna dry fire this. But if you pull it all the way, that pin at the bottom will just push the string up. When it's drawn to its full, full draw position, that pin will push up the string because the pin hits this portion of the stock and that's how the repeating action is done on these later variants. The earlier Warring States trigger mechanisms is a lot more complicated than this. When it comes to the magazine, it's a fixed magazine. No, you don't have detachable magazines. That was not an idea back in the day. And I hope you enjoyed this educational video.